Good evening and welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of March 7, 2013. I'm City Council President uh, Bill Dwight. I'm presiding tonight. Um, good evening, Councilor Schwartz. Um, we're going to open the meeting with, uh, with public, uh, public comment. Uh, the rules for public comment is you're limited to three minutes. Um, we aren't going to do anything drastic if you happen to run over that three minutes, but we ask you to wrap up within the three minutes that will be chimed out here. Um, and the first person up, and actually the only person signed up, is uh, Wayne Costi. Is that, did I pronounce that correct? Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes, uh, my name is Wayne Costi. I'm uh, uh, coming here t today uh, to announce uh, the start of a petition campaign um, for uh, something as mundane as nonfiction uh, uh, policy uh, review at the North uh, Northampton's Forbes Library. Um, uh, much of the, to the dismay of a group of uh, uh, library patrons, an offer of a documentary uh, that uh, uh, was uh, was refused by the. Uh, uh, library, the Forbes Library said uh, um, that in, in fact that uh, a documentary that uh, consists of uh, 43 structural engineers, high-rise architects, chemists, physicists, uh, very well credentialed, um, uh, uh, was not uh, deemed to be uh, 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 good use of shelf space, processing material, or staff processing time to add your items to the collection. Um, uh, the group I volunteer, I, uh, I volunteer for uh, and uh, uh, is uh, um, very interested in getting this into the organ, uh, getting in this into the library to correct some things. The, uh, the, um, in fact, the uh, Forbes Library uh, policy, um, uh, in fact, says that uh, uh, in the case of uh, controversial questions, variety and balance of opinion are sought wherever possible. Uh, we believe that the documentary that had been offered. Um, is uh, provides uh, not just balance, but we in fact a correction to many of the other uh, materials that are in the library, including uh, a documentary uh, called um, uh, "Why the Towers Fell by Nova." The uh, documentary that we offered is uh, called "9/11 Explosive Evidence: Experts Speak Out" uh, by a group called Architects and Engineers for 9/11 Truth, Truth, um, and, and uh, there are about nearly 2,000 architects and engineers verified and vetted. Um, that are uh, supporting this particular organization. So we believe that the materials are, in fact, uh, quite uh, appropriate to be added to the uh, Forbes Library collection. Um, so what we have uh, done is we've developed a website called uh, ForbesLibrary.net, and the .net means uh, nonfiction educates and transforms. Uh, that that uh, provides uh, the, uh, the background, discusses the Forbes Library policies on nonfiction, uh, and uh, talks uh, uh, about a little bit about the uh, the uh, uh, material that, was, that has been offered. Um, the uh, the problem, of course, is that uh, the only person who can approve a, a donation at the Forbes Library is a library director. Uh, the board of trustees has affirmed this, and um, in fact, uh, uh, we do not believe that it is um, the responsibility of the director to be the sole guardian for, as I quote from the uh, mission statement, sensitivity to the changing needs of the community, which is part of the mission statement. Um, and we believe that uh, there should be a broader participation. We've outlined several steps for, um, several steps for uh, implementing uh, uh, policy reforms. So uh, with that, uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to announce this uh, campaign. Thank you, Mr. Um, there is no one else signed up. Is anyone else interested in speaking tonight uh, in public comment? <clears throat> okay, I'm going to ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Here. Present. Here. Here. Present. Here. Here. Is here put out there. Here. Uh, accept a motion for the approval. Amendment. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, now we move on to proclamations, resolutions, and recognitions. And this uh, marks my first proclamation. I'm kind of excited. Right, yeah. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is uh, the city of Northampton, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, the Myeloma Awareness Month, March 2013. 
Whereas multiple myeloma or myeloma, the second most common blood cancer worldwide, is a cancer of plasma cells in the bone marrow. It is called multiple because the cancer can occur at multiple sites. And whereas multiple myeloma currently affects more than 100,000 people in the United States, with an estimated 20,000 new cases diagnosed each year and 10,000 losing the battle each year, and whereas one of the disease of the elderly it is now being found in increasing numbers in people under 65. And whereas because myeloma is a rare disease and there can be a delayed diagnosis leading to delayed treatment, thus an increased awareness of myeloma for clinicians and the general public will lead to earlier diagnosis, allowing people to live longer. And whereas continued investment in innovation is critical to achieve, to achieve early diagnosis and implement the most effective and safety, safest treatment for myeloma patients, and whereas, although we have seen important advances in the last decade, there still is no cure for myeloma. And whereas the City of Northampton wishes to increase awareness of myeloma and to encourage private efforts to enhance research funding and education programs, now therefore, I, Mayor <laughs> David, <laughs> David Narkwitz, do hereby proclaim uh, March 2013 is Myeloma Awareness Month in the City of Northampton. I encourage all residents to join me in activities that support myeloma education and the funding of research programs to find a cure. In witness whereof, I set my hand and imprinted the seal of the City of Northampton's seventh day of March in the year 2013. Mayor David J. Narkowitz. Sorry? Uh, now we're going to Oh, and Pamela Schwartz is back here for the, that's good, for the resolution for tax reform. This is upon the recommendation of the City Council and the School Committee, uh, the School Committee Conference Committee. Whereas beginning in 1998, there have been significant changes to the tax code, including a series of phase cuts to the state personal income tax from 5.9 5 percent to 5.3 percent, and cuts in the tax rate applied to dividend and interest income from 12 percent to 5.3 percent, whereas the net effect of all state tax reductions and increases since 1998 is that total tax revenue as a share of state personal income has declined by one percentage point, from 6.3 percent in FY 1998 to 5.3 percent in FY 2012 amounting to a loss of $3.8 billion in annual tax revenue for the Commonwealth according to the Massachusetts budget policy. And whereas this substantial decline in revenue has produced an ongoing fiscal crisis for the Commonwealth, resulting in deep funding cuts and essential public investments and in compromising the state's long-term growth potential and current and future well-being of Massachusetts residents, whereas Northampton State aid has been cut by nearly $4 million since the fiscal year 2002, from $13.5 million in fiscal year <coughs> 2002 to $9.6 million in fiscal year 2013. Whereas Northampton has taken every possible measure to raise local revenue to offset the impact of state aid cuts, including the passage of a $2 million general operating override for fiscal year 2010, the adoption of local hotel and meals taxes, and increases in parking fines and other fees, including licenses and permits, water and sewer rates, and trash disposal. Whereas Northampton has implemented dozens of cost-saving measures and continues to do so, including consolidation of departmental functions, adoption of municipal health insurance reform, implementation of major energy improvements, and performance management system. And whereas for the fiscal year 2014 budget, Northampton currently faces another substantial budget gap which will require more cuts to our public school system and city service. And whereas Governor Patrick has recognized the critical need to invest in our education and transportation systems across the Commonwealth in order to preserve and build Massachusetts economic and social health. And whereas in order to make that investment possible, Governor Patrick has proposed a $1.9 billion <coughs> progressive tax package <coughs> that would increase the income tax from 5.25 to 6.25 percent while doubling the automatic personal exemptions. Decrease the sales tax from 6.25 to 4.5 and eliminate a number of specific existing personal income tax exemptions and deductions. And whereas 
State Senator Sonia Chang-Diaz and State uh, Representative Jim O'Day, along with our own State Representative Peter Colcott as co-sponsor, have reintroduced the act to invest in our communities, a bill that would raise $2 billion in revenue through a combination of income tax and capital gains tax increases while increasing personal and other exemptions, making the tax code more equitable. And whereas the growing recognition that we can no longer expect local communities to preserve basic services without more state revenue makes this legislative session a crucial opportunity to take bold steps for tax reform and investment. Be it therefore resolved, the Northampton City Council and the Northampton School Committee Conference Committee urges the state legislature to consider the proposals outlined above and adopt fair and equitable tax reform to raise substantial revenue, a sufficient, por a sufficient portion of which will be allocated to local aid so that the City of Northampton can continue to provide the level of public service its citizens require and deserve. Thank you, uh, Second. Uh, second. There's a motion that's moved and seconded? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, discussion. Council uh, Casey. Um, I didn't have Peter Kolkitz in my copy here. Is that? Oh, because I gave There was a revision. So oh, there was a revision. You, have the, you should have the revised vision on, uh, version. A revision of the version. Uh, Council Schwartz, did you? Okay. I, I just thought I'd provide a little verbal context. Well, in addition to the very long verbal, thank you for reading that. That was so almost sorry, I want to say. No, that's okay. Um, thank you in the name of the cause. Um, so I just want to acknowledge my fellow counselors, Councilor Carney and Councilor Adams, and myself as the counselor side of this. City Council Northampton School Committee member, uh, School Committee Conference Committee, and the School Committee side of School Committee members, Downey Myers, um, um, Blue Duval, and Michael Flynn. Um, so together, um, we have arrived at this resolution um, in the spirit of everything that was just stated, and really hope that we as a council can make our, just lend our voice to this urgency um, in our revenue situation and, and the need to invest. What I want to acknowledge is that we know that from Mayor Narkowitz, Governor Patrick's proposal is not an instant hit for Northampton in particular um, around the, what, gets, what comes back to our community. Um, and yet at the same time, what we discussed in our committee is that we, and this and goes to the final resolution. What we really are messaging here is that we need progressive tax reform, we need revenue in order to sustain our health as a community, both here in Northampton and across the state, and that we, we need to do our part, and this is, this is our part on the local level. And I will also add that I discussed this uh, directly with Representative Cocott, and he was very happy at the prospect of us offering this in the state debate as being a council that weighed in and said, yes, this, let's move forward with progressive tax reform and raise the necessary revenue we need um, to protect our services. Any other comments? Uh, Councilor Adams? I just want to thank Councilor Schwartz for drafting this, and I just want to say I support this 100 percent. Thank you. And likewise, uh, thank you to Councilor Schwartz for putting all of this together. Um, we um, really had some deep discussion about this at our conference committee and, as Councilor Schwartz mentioned, had respective conversations with uh, Representative Cocut. And even though there are uh, sometimes seeming conflicting um, uh, proposals being offered, what Representative Cocut did stress to us is that there will be some compromise when it gets to uh, the House Conference Committee and House and Senate, and uh, likely um, there will be elements of each. So the fact that we supported and passed a resolution months ago to support the um, Act to Invest in Our Communities, um, just uh, this just strengthens that resolution and acknowledges that the, the, the governor's uh, package does have support, and pieces of it may very well be in the final package. So thank you. Uh, Councilor LeBarge. Yes, and I want to thank Councilor Schwartz also for putting this language together. We have been going through this. I think we've had, when Councilor Dwight was a colleague with me, we ran into this problem of constantly having problems of layoffs, not enough of money, 
We had another little break again in, what, 2010, and we're right back at it again. I agree about the act to invest in our communities. There's no question about it. I was glad to just hear from Councilor Carney in regards to once it gets to the State House that they would be talking about the breakdown on the governor's budget. I mean, on, on what he wants to do with this package because I've been getting calls from residents concerned about the capital gain parts of it. Because if you own a home, you're a first home buyer, and then you go ahead and sell your house and go into another home, you didn't have to pay, it was rolled over and you didn't have to pay a capital gain. So, but I'm supporting this to make it go to the state house, let them go ahead and work these problems out and whatever is right. But we need the money. There's no question about it. We're looking at our schools. We're looking at cuts again. Constantly hearing about our schools. And it seems like they're the ones that are always being targeted. And I'm hoping that a good compromise will be made so we don't have any layoffs in our school departments. Well, I, I think that there is no denying that municipalities have a very difficult time making ends meet in Massachusetts. But I can't make a connection between that and sending more money to Boston. If the state is really concerned about the situation we find itself in, then why doesn't the state give us more ways to raise revenue within the city of Northampton? I mean, at this point, the state has done nothing but cut us since about 2004. We send more money to Boston than we ever see back again. So I really think it's delusional to think that if we give the state the opportunity to raise more money, that we're really going to see that come back to us in an amount that's going to make a big difference. I would support us petitioning the legislature to give the city of Northampton and all cities a way to raise money within our districts that's our money that we can spend on our needs. But to send money to Boston in the hopes that we're going to get it back when, in fact, they've done nothing but reduce the money that we get since 2004 doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, we have needs. And I've said before, I really don't respect the state much in viewing us as equal partners in government in Massachusetts because they squeeze us. I and mean, we can only raise revenue they let us raise. If they really want to help municipalities provide educational service, pave roads, pay for public safety, then give us a way to raise money that's our money within our jurisdiction and don't <coughs> force us to rely on state aid. You know, there are communities in Massachusetts that half their budget comes from the Commonwealth. We're not one of those. I support the fact that we need money, and I would certainly support petitioning the Commonwealth to give us sources of revenue that allow us to stand on our own two feet and pay our own bills. But sending more money to Boston in the hopes that they're going to send it back to us hasn't worked out for us yet, and I don't see it working out for us now. I'd much rather put the effort into getting sources of revenue that are ours and ours to keep rather than hoping that they're, you know, with this tax increase going to be more generous to us because I just don't think that's realistic. Councilor Speck. If, Councilor Murphy, if you had a way to do that as a progressive tax rather than a regressive tax, I would love to hear the ideas because then I would support that. I, I'm just not sure how we, short of having a progressive local income tax, which wouldn't make much sense, how we would do that so that we weren't just uh, compounding the problem, which is we have a more regressive tax system than we used to have throughout most states, and certainly in Massachusetts 20 years ago or so. I don't disagree with you that the money gets wasted, we don't get as much back, but I don't see what what suggestions you might have. We don't want to, I mean, more permission to raise more property tax, that's pretty regressive. More sales tax, more taxes on meals or hotels, even that tends to be somewhat regressive. So I don't see what the actual practical solution, although I agree with you philosophically. Can I respond to that? <clears throat> yeah. Well, but it's not even on the table. You know, this, it isn't even on the table. I mean, I am sure we could find a way for municipalities to raise more money if we would even take that approach. But we don't ever take that approach. The state always says, just give us more money and trust us we're going to send it back and help you out. And they never have. Can, can I respond? Is that fair? Uh, I agree with you on that. I just don't see how even if the reason 
I don't see supporting a resolution like that, and I will support this resolution. Mm -hmm. I don't see what we would be asking the state, what kind of taxes would we be asking permission for? If you could come up with some that were progressive and not regressive, I would certainly look at those. And let's say I have, I have another resolution that says, let's raise money, let's have a more liberal way that we can raise money locally that the state legislature allows us to do. I just don't know what that would, would be. Council LaBarge and then Council Schwartz. Yes. I, th I think we need to look at this language here. The hotel, the meals tax, we've done everything in our power as a legislative body, the mayors, our previous mayor, our mayor now, they've had their hands full. We've done everything to try to keep this city functioning. And we're at the level now, again, we're looking at, we're back to where we were cuts and more cuts, whatever's going to happen here. One way or another, I will support this, but I'm a little leery here because of the capital gain part of it. But hearing that apparently it will be talked out at the State House, and I'm hoping because I know um, our State Rep, Peter Cocott, will be getting some calls from my residents because they have great concerns of him being um, his name being on this and supporting this, and I'm happy about that, but we need more answers to this. Um, I have to agree with Councilor Spector. I, as a Councilor, I wouldn't know where to begin to, to talk about what Councilor Murphy's talking about. I wouldn't know where to start. We're, we can see we're in trouble. There's no question about it. So we have no choice but to send this to the State House and we need to get some money in this city. Council Schwartz. I guess I, I would like to respond to Councilor Murphy. Um, I, I do disagree, I think, fundamentally with, um, with the notion of uh, the solutions lying on a exclusively, in effect, what you're suggesting on a municipal level. I guess to, to carry it out, I would say I want the tax revenue of wealthy people in the Boston area coming back to Northampton. And I know your rejoinder is, but it doesn't. And my rejoinder to that is we need to hold the government, state level government accountable for that. And that is all part of the process of how the money is spent. There's raising the money and then there's allocating the money. And that is where clearly we need more local aid. Clearly, when you say it hasn't been coming back, you know, look at what's happened thus far. There's been cuts in the income tax. I mean, there's been declining revenue and a, and a huge recession. So, I mean, there has been declining revenue. And so we need to restore where the ground we've lost it through changes in the income tax. And I want to hold our state level government accountable for doing their job for the common wealth and that we get our fair share. But I don't, I just philosophically do not want to rely on Northampton residents exclusively. We need to be in this together, do the democracy thing, and make sure that we are sharing the wealth. Can I respond to that? Mm -hmm. Well, I think nice. Councilor Schwartz uh, carried your side of the debate as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, you may respond my, to that and then Councilor Friedman. Yeah, my only response would be, we are net exporters of dollars. More money leaves the city than comes back at this point. And I, I don't see how sending more, that, that that equation is going to change. And I mean, this isn't, you know, unique to any one community in Massachusetts with a few possible Boston suburban exceptions. Most of the communities are having a really tough time making ends meet. And the only money that's really ours is the money we raise. If a new mechanism that's, uh, not regressive has to be determined to come up with money, then I'm all in favor of looking into it. We're not looking into it. We're doing the same old thing again that hasn't worked. Councilor Freeman Dane. Thank you. I agree with Councilor Murphy in general, but I also support this resolution because I do think that uh, uh, this is part of the solution. Uh, I do think that there's a failure of imagination on the state level, um, and part of that is. Um, what becomes politically acceptable and, and we know that uh, bold policy takes time and uh, lots of little steps. So I support this, but I also agree with Councilor Murphy. Anyone else? Councilor Tate. It's very much like Groundhog Day. We've been through this, all of this, a million times at this, on this council. We talked about it when, uh, for the lottery, we talked about it. Just, it's, it's continuous. It just uh, never ends. 
We do. We spend a lot. We send a lot of money to Boston, and I don't think we see our fair share. Um, I don't know just exactly. I'm really not a big supporter of the increase in capital gains. That's one thing that um, that, that bothers me. And um, we need money. I mean, I, I just had a meeting up at the Ward Seven up at uh, the Leeds School. We had 36 people show up, and there's no good news. I mean, it's bad news across the budget. It's bad news everywhere. Uh, Chapter 70. Maybe, um, I, of course, everybody will disagree with me. Maybe we should eliminate a lot of these park grants. That's what I always thought. Um, and maybe give that money unrestricted to cities and towns without all these strings attached um, on where to use it. I don't know. Um, and these mandates for the stormwater. I'm just going to stop. I, I, I really haven't figured this whole thing out yet. Uh, just a point of information, there is no mention of it, capital gains in the resolution, just so we're clear on that, so the public understands. Uh, <coughs> Council Murphy and the Well, actually, Not Council so Carney several times. Yeah. Well, only because uh, a couple of councillors have mentioned the capital gains piece, which is one of the um, few parts of the governor's proposal that um, Representative Coca did, did say uh, concerns him and concerns many of his peers in the Progressive Caucus. And... Um, and he expects that those won't stay. The, uh, the exemptions for, um, you know, the mortgage exemption, which the governor's proposal seeks to eliminate, and the college tuition exemption, some of those, um, <clears throat> de those deductions will, will likely not survive in the discussion in the, in the House and Senate. So um, that's why when we talked about these at the conference committee, it seemed best to really emphasize the revenue raising piece, as Councillor Schwartz so you know, articulately said, we really do need to get that money back that has disappeared for quite some time. I understand Councillor Murphy's argument that, that we, we send money to Boston, we send money to Washington, and then it's a matter of how it is distributed. So if that really are two, those are really two different conversations, though. There's the appropriation, and then there's the distribution. Right now, we, we need the appropriation. We need the funds. And when it comes time to you know, the distribution piece, we need to do all of our lobbying as best we can mm -hmm. to get, to get the, um, the resources back here to the city of Northampton. Councilor Murphy. Simple suggestion. How about we have the opportunity to designate 25% of our state tax burden and pay it optionally to our municipality rather than sending it to Boston? That would work. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I like that. That would work. Say, fine. You know, you owe the state $5,000. You can pay a certain percent of it to your municipality <laughs> rather than sending it to Boston. Yeah. That would work. Good. It probably okay. wouldn't please the state very much. <laughs> it's a way to uh, keep it local. Well, we'll look forward to that resolution. Yeah. Yeah. Just, right. I just, um, just make sure I don't disappear. Count Council Busy. Capital gains rate tax tax <coughs> increase is in here. Oh, I'm sorry. In the I just wanted to clear that. I stand corrected. Third paragraph. I stand corrected. I'm sorry. Whereas, uh, yeah, 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 and I read it, didn't capital I? Capital gains so. tax rate increases. I fell asleep while I was reading. <laughs> yeah. uh, Councilor Adams. I just want to point out briefly that. I've heard some of the class, you know, some of the some of the anti-tax arguments, and I, 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 listening, it, let's let's keep in mind that there's also a dramatic reduction in the sales tax too, and um, and so this is a compromise, and but there is a net surplus, and um, and I think that in general, aside from the points that I've the, the good points that Councilor Murphy raised, this proposal is more progressive, I think, and more fair, and somewhat levels the playing field. And I also support this based on those grounds, which are essentially social justice grounds. Thank you. Any other comment? All right. Um, this is a resolution that does not require a roll call vote, but would you like a roll call vote? Oh, yes. yeah. uh, Councilor uh, Murphy's call for a roll call. Jesse, you speak too close to me. Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Daniels? Aye. Councilor Bars? Yes. Councilor Murphy? No. Councilor Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. No. And the resolution passed. The resolution passed the first meeting to us on the 21st for second. Excuse me. Yeah. When will the disability come back? That will be uh, the disabilities proclamation will be uh, 
next you'll be able to come on March 22nd, uh, 21st, I'm sorry. If you show up the 22nd, you'll miss the meeting. Uh, the March 21st is the next city council meeting. So we're up to uh, one minute announcements. Any councilors have uh, some information they'd like to share? Council I just wanted to thank everybody that showed up at the Ward 7 uh, meeting at the Leeds School last week. It was, uh, it was great. We had about 36 people. Um, everything went very well. And I want to thank everybody for showing up. Thank you. Any other announcements? Okay. Um, we're now up to uh, appointments. Uh, there's, do we want to do the late file? Okay, the, uh, the late file appointment, uh, new appointment to the Agricultural Commission, uh, Stan Zawalik. Uh, Zawalik? I'm sorry. I'm awfully sorry. But okay. Zawalik. Stan Zawalik, 538 Sylvester Road, Florence, term to expire January 2016, replacing expired term of Ben James. Um, this is re on the recommendation of the Committee on Appointments and Evaluations. Uh, and, and looking for suspension need to, rule 38. Um, yeah, suspend rule 38. Second. All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. 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 Okay. And looking forward to a motion here. Move so to motion. approve. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Council Labarge? Yes. Um, the Sawalics, um have been living on Sylvester Road from generation to generation. They on both sides of now, which is Councillor Tacey's on Ward 7, the parents have done farming all their lives also. They have a fantastic um, sugaring house and also Stan on the other side, which is my side of the ward, also um, does a tremendous amount of farming and also on the maple sugaring. And it's really interesting to go over and watch the families when they are doing the maple sugaring. And they also are at the um, farmer's markets here all the time, very, very faithful. And um, like I said, they're very reputable. And I am so happy. And I know that John O'Masta, who is also another farmer on my ward, has been talking to my farmers of bringing him in to join this commission. And I'm very happy about this. Councilor Freeman Daniels. Thank you. Uh, was Mr. Zawalik at the meeting f of appointments and evaluations? Uh, Councilor Speck. Mr. Zawalik was scheduled to come that day, and that was the day of, after the big snowstorm, and he had to do the final. So he called us, we spoke to him on the phone, and we met, and we did review this application. But I spoke to him because he couldn't make it that morning. All right, he had a plow. Yeah. Uh, how did he, did he speak with the committee on the phone or? No, I spoke, I spoke with him um, because we were going to do a conference call, but he was out plowing until we reviewed his application. I spoke to him on the phone. And that is not unusual for us to sometimes do, especially if committee members have um, references from other people, that we sometimes will do that if somebody can't make the meeting, and we have done that in the past. And I actually think it's been a, a, a policy that served us well. If there is any question if, and any other counselor wants to come to that meeting or to raise questions, we're happy to have that happen. But and it, particularly in that case where here's somebody was the, that was the weekend after the big storm. It just seemed that, um, you know, he he would have if I had said, you know, well, we definitely need you to come in. He would have come in. And again, this whole thing, let, let's, just, let's just be reasonable. I, I'd like to be reasonable here about what's practical. Here are people volunteering to be on a committee. We have been using a lot of outreach to get these people on committees. They write a application out. We speak to them on the phone. In most places, I would think that that would be enough. We have gone overboard, and I understand what you're probably getting at, and you probably hear my tone of voice very clearly, because I think we're reaching a point mm -hmm. of being in a really silly place. 
And there's part of me that wants to say, maybe we shouldn't even have a committee doing the interviews, that it is enough to have an application process and where the mayor is looking at these and they can come to the city council again. Because I'll tell you, in the years we've been doing this, I think only once or twice have we ever had any concerns or questions. So we are going overboard when we do this. And when we have something like a snowstorm and somebody is very responsible, calls us, we speak to them on the phone, we come in, so it was the only piece on our agenda, we made it in in the snowstorm to come to this meeting to discuss this. I think we went overboard to make sure we reviewed this application. Uh, Council Inspector, thus carrying Council Freeman Daniels side of the argument as well. This is very nice, very, everyone's being very thoughtful for considering everyone else's debate points. Council LaVarge. Yes, I, I want to echo what Councilor Specter is saying. It's like, I don't think that residents who are applying to be on a commission and besides that commission, I worked very hard with the Councilor in Ward 3 to put that commission in place. And it seems like we're having a tremendous amount of people now who want to be involved in different types of committees. And it's like every time now that we have an applicant coming forth, we need to have all kinds of information. We do talk with them on the phone. We outright do talk with them on the phone. And I think there's a lot of value there. Counselors work during the day, so don't residents work during the day. And he's a farmer. That's his livelihood. Plowing in the wintertime is his livelihood. He at least had the decency to talk to Counselor Specter. I know the family. So I think we've gone way overboard in the past year with appointments and evaluations. I'm just not going to just constantly drill and drill residents. I don't think it's right. Uh, Councilor Tacey and Councilor Adams. I know the Zawalik's elephant very, very well. They are in their, mm -hmm. their property, their, their, the way they uh, maintain their land, uh, and the way they act in the community. And you couldn't find anybody more qualified or better for this position, and I intend to support them. They're an asset to the community, the whole family out there, and their, their whole operation. And I think they will it'll, it'll serve very, very well. Um, and if it were up to me, I would move this appointment right now. Well, Councilor Adams says the floor. I'm sure this uh, applicant's well qualified, and I have no doubt that the committee does great work. But I also think that there's nothing wrong with this committee or this council asking some questions about applicants. I don't see any problem with that. Thank you. Councilor Specter. I, I would totally agree if there are specific questions. If it's a general thing, I, I totally, any questions you have, and if we can mm -hmm. answer them, if we can't, we can wait to do the vote. So I'm totally in favor of that. It's why I was saying maybe it should just come before because we've gone through years and years of this and there have very rarely been questions. I, I, I'm not saying I, I think we should continue this committee. I think it serves a function. Mm -hmm. But if there are specific questions that come up and, it's, it do, and, the, and the council doesn't feel they can ask those at our committee meeting or there's an opportunity, then bring them forward at this meeting. If you have specific questions about the applicant. What we're talking about is process. The we're talking about questions about whether the applicant could show up at the meeting or not. Well, why? What would it have been? What would you have asked this applicant if you look at his application that might have concerned you? I think that's legitimate. Mm -hmm. So I think those should be asked. Well, to that point, we're uh, voting on the qualifications of this applicant, and we, I think it's incumbent upon us to discuss the process, uh, perhaps in another time. Uh, uh, Councilor Conner. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm just um, looking at the ordinance that, is, that establishes the committee, and just to remind uh, councilors that yeah, I think that there's latitude on the on the committee, and we can rely on those councilors who serve on that committee to do uh, to complete their charge, which is really to be responsible um, for establishing and overseeing procedures for appointing, and um, r really, I think that there's we have broad latitude uh, to give this committee and I would uh, defer to the counselors on that committee for their recommendations unless I had an issue is there any more is there any discussion on the applicant um, okay all those in favor Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. any abstentions okay 
Um, we have um, an announcement for uh, this is an announcement of elections. Elections are going to be held at 8 p.m. on Thursday, April 14th, 2013. I'm sorry? April 4. Well, I'm a little problem with the date. I'm sorry. Mary corrects me. Thursday, April 4th. 2013. If you, again, once again, if you show up on the 14th, you'll miss it. Uh, for Board of Assessors, one member, three-year term to expire March 2016. And that Timothy Fulham, Fulham uh, seeks re-election. Uh, applicants may submit a letter of interest and or resume by Thursday, March 28, 2013, to the City Council Office here at 210 Main Street, Room 18, Northampton, Mass, 01060. For more information on the Board of Assessors, please call Joan Serafin, City Assessor, at 587-1202. Okay. Um, this is uh, an application. This is uh, for approval for VFW Bingo Night. Uh, dear counselors, the VFW has applied for a license from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to provide a community bingo, also known as Bino, night at the VFW. The proposed activity would take place at the Michael F. Curtin VFW Post 8006, 18 Meadow Street in Florence, between the hours of 5 p.m. and 12 p.m. <coughs> Is that correct? Okay. Um, uh, on Monday nights. As the council may know, the VFW has in the past provided bingo for the community on Monday nights. Many of our uh, customers, particularly the elderly folks who live nearby, have requested that we resume this activity. We believe this activity would be beneficial both for the VFW and for the community. The Commonwealth requires that we provide a letter from the city council indicating that it has no objection to the VFW providing bingo to the community on Monday nights between the hours of 5 p.m. and 12 p.m. The VFW has free and open parking lot and there is free parking on most streets in Florence. And we would appreciate it if the City Council would consider our request at its next meeting. And if you have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to call me at 413-584-8006. And that's Diana Stallone. Uh, what do we do? Yeah, yeah, and Mr. Peace is here. Uh, for anyone who has any questions, um, I think this will this was going to require a motion here for the approval. Make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay. As Anyone want to recognize Mr. Pease? Yes. Recognize Mr. Pease. All right. All Second. in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good evening. I'm Tom Pease. I live at 130 Spring Street in Florence. I'm the senior vice commander at the VFW in Florence. And I'm here looking for a signature and your approval so we can get back to bingo on Monday night. <coughs> so if you have any questions, I'm here to answer any concerns that you have. Councilor Tacey, Councilor Barge. All right. You're going to call it bingo or bingo? Bingo. We call it bingo. The state calls it bingo. We call it bingo. It's always been bingo. It's going to be bingo. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I know. I mean, yeah. it's, it's the lottery. I, I mean, it's, when thank the, you guy, the guy from the lottery called us and he said, yeah, you want to you wanna approach one of your, you know, what do you got out there, a city manager or a selectman? I said, no, we have councilmen. We have a mayor. So <laughs> yeah, I, I straightened him out. It's too. wonderful to the folks in Boston. You know, we're on the other yeah, side. And I want to thank the VFW and you and yeah all you guys for everything that you yeah. do for the community thank you very yeah. much well, we're trying huh? a good Martin. group of people up there yes, working it is. pretty hard and i like the fact that the phone number is the same as the phone. that's right it's not hard to forget council the bards and council freeman daniels yeah i am very happy to see that bingo is coming back again because right. i know between the elks doing it on wednesday nights people were hoping right. that and you've that this would come back because it was loaded all the time when you had it there. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you. I want yep. to thank the Veterans Council for working so hard to put the VFW where it should be. Yep. Thank you. Back where it should be. All right. Thank you for your support. Yes. I'll scream it in. Thank you. Uh, I'm just curious. Are you uh, are you lowballing just Monday night for bingo? I mean, do you want more nights? Because I don't care. You could do it every night. Yeah. As far as no, we're just we're we're going to start out on Monday night because of course we have the Elks on Wednesday night, and there's a lot of things going on Friday and Saturday nights at the club and other places throughout the city. We just felt as though Monday night was a night that some of the elderly people want to get out. You know, so get away from Monday night football. Excuse, <laughs> right. yeah. boring. Excuse my ignorance, though. Do you? You need a support from the council about each I, I need time. A, you I need one signal. I know I need uh, the uh, 
the chair. I know I need his signature. I don't that, need every single. Company. And with that, the state would say you can have bingo any night, basically? Yeah, we can have it any night we want. <laughs> okay. We I'm chose sorry, Monday I, evening. I yes. Yeah. He, he actually, he, uh, Mary informs her that you need full council approval. I so. need full council yes. approval, yes. Uh, council of Arch. Um, I, I'm, I'm very happy that um, Councilor Owen Freeman Daniels brought that up about not just the one night, does does this actually cover you to have it if you want to do it six days a week? Yeah, as far as I know, yeah, we could. Yeah, I would just, check we, that out. We, we, we chose. Well, Mary informs me differently, I'm afraid. It'll just be to, that night. See? Yes. It'll be just for the night that's, yeah. that we're approving. No, right. We are we're approving now right. just for Monday and night, right. So why couldn't you? But we like never gave saying, much thought about well. Well, you should because what if they, or it starts getting so packed on a Monday night, and then they're saying, well, geez, you know, Tom, maybe you should think about having it on a Thursday night. We would have to go through the process again for another night. That's what I'm yeah. saying. So yeah. why don't you just have the language written at, like he's saying, within the week. At this stage of the game, I'm real happy just having Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we need to force any more nights on the VFW at this point. They seem content with their application. Counselor Tasty. <laughs> I mean, at what point it would tip the scales where you'd need a full casino license? Uh, yeah, right. Oh, don't start <laughs> that. Now, <laughs> and that's what we're up against now with the new, new casino. The proposal of the new casino is coming in. It's, I don't know what what's in store for us. Good luck. Yeah. Yes. Council, Council of the Park. Yes, question. Mm -hmm. All right, say they do the Monday nights and then it gets really, really busy and then they decide that yeah maybe they would like to do another night so they would have to have another one rewritten correct they would have to apply again yes. with the date spe specified in the letter and that we would vote on that right okay. we go back to the state lottery commission again for another night right okay. i mean I, I think the state hoops are a lot higher and harder to jump through than ours so okay thank you yeah yeah we just we were approved for keno we do have keno going now so the next yeah. step is you're, you're, Bino. Right. Well, Kino and Lotto, then you're going to have to make those distinctions as yeah. well. Um, all right. I think I think we've run this to ground. Uh, all those in favor of granting permission to the VFW to hold their bingo night on Monday nights. So. Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Tom, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Bingo, Bino. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a late file for a taxi cab license. Jeffrey Miller. We've now become very familiar with it's here. Uh, if you want to ask some questions, this is doing business as Cosmic Cab, one vehicle to replace one vehicle now out of service. And uh, you should have the document. Suspend Rule 38. There's a motion second. to suspend and second to suspend Rule 38. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, does anyone want to? <coughs> anyone have any questions about this? <coughs> Make a motion to. Make a motion to recognize. Accept. Okay, let's say that Councilor Tacey made the motion. Councilor Labarge seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Thank you very much. Done, done. This is the point where we recess for finance. We recess for finance. Now we reconvene. That's it. There's no <laughs> finance committee. <laughs> 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 yeah, Councilor Murphy. Happy, I'll happy, happy. On to the Mr. Murphy. <laughs> you're, 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 you're missing something, no, but take the night off. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, the reports of committees, uh, transportation and parking uh, commission meetings, uh, meeting minutes of November 20th, 2012, and December 18th, 2012, and January 15th, 2013, are presented to you. Move to approve. Uh, all those in favor of accepting the minutes? Aye. 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 Opposed? And then there's a uh, late file, which is the minutes from the Committee on Appointments and Evaluations of, of February 11, 2013. Suspend Rule 38 and move to approve. <laughs> Motion to suspend rules. To second, second on the suspension. All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, now that I'm, I'll accept your motion. Uh, second. And there's a second. All those in favor? Aye. All right, the minutes have passed. Presentations, uh, land conservation, open space, recreation, and multi-use trail plan. Uh, 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 I would accept a motion to, well, actually, let's put this on the floor first, and then um, a motion to recognize. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay, we don't need to put that on the floor. Uh, Move to recognize. Uh, 
Queen Fighting. Fight. Second. <laughs> okay, all those in favor recognize Aye. Queen Fighting. Aye. Aye. Uh, okay. Aye. Thank you. You're up, Wayne. Um, I'll try to be fast. Um, you have a picture behind you of the, the open space plan. So every seven years, <coughs> we do an open space and recreation plan. It's only required by law to be adopted by the Planning Board and Conservation Commission. But we've always wanted to go the extra steps. You see the list of whatever, seven or eight boards that approve the plan. So the plan is good for seven years. We're two years into it. We thought it's worth coming back to you on the second anniversary of it so you sort of know how we're going and, and give an update on where we are. Uh, next slide, Mary. Um, so the plan basically calls for 13 actions. I'm just going to race through them very quickly um, so you know what each of these are. Um, the first action is doing a better job of managing our property. Uh, we've been successful. CPA has granted some money for doing, dealing with exotics, non-native plants. We're beginning a program, you see in the upper right, of posting the property lines so people know both where our property is uh, and what the rules are for that property, but equally, people using our property know when they're leaving our land so they don't trespass on, on private property. Uh, next slide. Um, one of the big parts of the plan has been acquisitions, and there's, I think, six different slides about different kinds of acquisitions that we're doing. Um, <laughs> but by far, the most significant one is buying land that's sort of primarily for wildlife purposes. So we love it when people use the land, um, but it's really primarily about, you know, sort of pristine. Um, and the target in the plan was that 25 percent of the city should eventually be permanently protected. Um, that's for the seven-year plan. Now, it doesn't mean that five years from now you couldn't ask for more or less, but that's the current plan. Um, where we are today with the, the most recent acquisitions is about 18.1 percent of the city is in this pristine condition. These are basically the large conservation areas. And that includes state land, city land, federal land, and mass Audubon property. So about 10.6 percent of the city is actually owned by the Conservation Commission. The rest is, is different agencies. Uh, next slide. Um, so acquisitions aren't only for wildlife. A lot of the acquisitions are for, for neighborhoods. One of the goals is to have neighborhoods within walking distance of conservation areas. Um, and currently about 1 percent of the city is small conservation areas that serve neighborhood needs. Um, now obviously there's some overlap, but these, for example, are things like Mary Brown's Dingle or Montview Conservation Area, conservation areas that are really valuable to neighbors who live there. But you wouldn't fly in from California to come to Northampton to see Montview Conservation Area, even though it's a wonderful piece of property. So that, that's sort of the, you might. But. <laughs> People have. <laughs> um, so that's sort of the, the option. And obviously, there's some crossovers. You know, the big one we're working on right now is the Connecticut River Greenway. And it serves different goals, but one of the goals is to serve River Run Apartments, which is a, you know, desperately underserved project. Uh, next slide, please. Um, one of the big efforts is preserving farmland. You all were very involved, obviously, in preserving the Allard Bean property. That happened just before the plan was adopted, which is why it's not on the list. But since the plan was adopted, we've done two big efforts. One was the Florence Organic Community Garden. This is the one that's owned by Grow Food Northampton but the city has a basic 200-year lease on it. And then the 80 acres we just acquired as a con of a agriculture preservation restriction on the uh, Charles Jasinski's property. Still privately owned, but there's restrictions, so it's permanently protected. Um, we don't count it, and I, I give you the percentage of how much the city is open space. We don't count this because this is still farming, it's still active. There's no public rights to go on the property. Um, people still pay property taxes but there's a guarantee it stays and protected forever, and 3.2 percent of the city is, isn't that. Uh, next slide, Mary. Um, the other thing is, you know, obviously preserving farmland is really important, but preserving farmland without preserving farming is sort of worthless. So through the efforts from a lot of people, including Council of Barge, we created an agriculture commission four years ago now, um, and they've been very active. And so the specific things I want to report in the last couple of years, we surplused about four acres of land, the old Rogers farm, we took for back taxes, sold that to Charlie Jasinski to get it back in active production. Um, and the agriculture commissions had two successes, I think in particular, one's working with the Board of Public Works, to try to get some improved road maintenance in the meadows. Uh, and the other is this farmer's forum, which this year they're the second forum, and they plan to do a third one next year. That's been great to get conversations going with farmers. Uh, next slide. Um, recreation acquisition. This has been something we probably in the future won't be doing that much of because we really sort of caught up. 
but the dramatic piece was the floor inch recreation fields, which we acquired two years ago. It's not only the largest recreation area in the city, but I think it's about the size of all the other recreation areas combined. So it was a, it was a big expansion in our efforts. It's currently under construction, but we also just acquired about an acre, acre and a half at Sheldon Field. It's a donation from Mr. Jasinski. Um, and so about 1.5% of the city is in parks and recreation. Now you should know, even though it's a small percent, when you look at the value of the land of open space, a lot of the values in this property, you can guess, Look Park is worth more than probably all the conservation areas combined. So when you look at the, the value of open space, most of it's in this category. The next slide. Um, so obviously developing the property for recreation areas were important. So we have this massive project, a $1.9 million project under construction now to build Florence recreation fields. Um, last year we did some of the preliminary work. The big construction will be this summer. So by this fall, actually by midsummer, it's going to start looking by a rec at a, like a recreation area. And then the Connecticut River Greenway project, that begins construction this year as well. What's not on here is also the, uh, the ball field at Vets Field begins construction, I believe, this summer. Uh, next slide. Connecticut River Waterfront Park and Boathouse is, again, a goal in the open space plan. Um, so we've acquired the land. We have the grant for the park. The park itself is under construction. The boathouse itself we don't see as a city responsibility. So the plan is the Northampton uh, Youth and Community Rowing will hold a 99-year lease to the property. Yeah. Doesn't mean they won't be asking for grants from CPA and other sources, but we're really seeing it's the city's responsibility to do sort of sites and services, which we have, we have money for, and then they'll be doing the fundraising and eventual boathouse construction. Is that a picture of a wave? Just fog, morning fog. All right, okay. For those we'll crazy. Or an Emmy at the surf like that <laughs> oh. on the Connecticut River. We have not marketed that resource adequately. <laughs> you know, I love boating, but I'm not someone who get up at five in the morning. So. Right, next slide. Uh, recreation maintenance. This is an area which, unfortunately, is always a challenge because just a cost. And, and of all the things, it's probably the thing we have the hardest time doing is maintaining our recreation areas. There are some efforts underway. Um, again, we're doing a boundary line marker program right now to mark the recreation boundaries. That's partially, it's actually mostly to be good neighbors. You know, we have a problem sometimes with people using recreation areas and their dogs going to the farmland that's nearby. And so we want to mark the boundaries and say, come here, enjoy this property, and please don't let your dogs run wild when you leave the property boundary. Um, Recreation Commission is playing with, with the community and, and trying to form a new Friends of Northampton Recreation. Um, nonprofit, so they have lots of longtime partners in terms of all the different league sports, but they're hoping to get a sort of a, a pan sport league who will help them do fundraising in a way that city agencies can't do. Uh, next slide. Uh, Multi-use trail development. Um, part of the reason we've gotten these bicycle friendly and walk friendly awards recently, as you know, just before the plan was adopted, we built 11 new miles of rail trail. That effort continues. It won't be as dramatic as opening 11 miles to rail trail, but the Leeds Park and Ride lot we built this year, and that will include access to the bike path, so both a new ramp to the bike path, and we assume people will park there and use it. The Connecticut River Greenway project, again, has, has room for some bike paths on it. We're looking at two on-ramps on King Street, one, one at Bank of America and one at Edwards Square. Um, and then the big project this year is we hope the state will be building a tunnel underneath the rail, railroad line, um, hopefully starting this fall. We have to come back to you for one more vote. Um, yes, question. Yeah. Access to the trail that's going to be right across Route 9, is that correct? From the, the park and ride lot? Correct. Pedestrian crossing light full? That's right. I, I, I spoke with uh, uh, the powers to be at the VA um, this week. and. Um, they were a little cloudy on that. So there's an existing signal, as you know, yep. that signal doesn't have a pedestrian cycle. Yep. So the state mass DOT will be building a new, adding, replacing the controller or the computer in the box, um, and then putting a new signal in. It will just be a pedestrian actuated button. And your cross and the crosswalk, which is moving a little bit from where it is now, yep. will line up directly with the trail, and the trail will go right up to the current bike. So the VA doesn't really have anything to do with this design. It's the, we are charged with that, is that correct? Uh, this is actually a wonderful deal. Mass DOT, we got to comment on it. It was Mass DOT's dime. So every penny of this was from Mass DOT. Okay. So Mass DOT did the design, we got to comment on it, and then they built it. And that would explain why the VA really did not know that much about right. it. Right. They knew, they gave us easements. Right. Um, but beyond that, it, 
wasn't there. It's the only real cost to the city, and, and DPW is okay with this, is that signal right now is owned by the VA. The signal, once it's fixed, will be owned by the city. So we have some ongoing maintenance costs okay. for the signal. But other than that, it's sort of free, if you will. To, to where does the state highway pick up? At Look Restaurant? Is that where the state highway picks up there? I don't remember where the signs are. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, it's All that right. area, but I don't remember exactly. Okay. I was just trying to find some way to give that light to the state. Go <laughs> uh, good luck. Uh, and then the last two projects, you know, we know that maintenance is an important part of this. We inherited a bridge in, in Leeds as part of all the bike paths. That bridge has not been maintained in 40 years. Um, and so CPA, with your approval, gave us money to, to repoint the bridge, which we'll be doing this summer. And then the one piece of bad news is as part of the bike paths, we inherited a retaining wall about 100 yards from here, which is a 130-year-old retaining wall, and it's decided that now is the time it's going to start collapsing. Um, and so we need to do work on that. We have, we did save a contingency as part of the bike path uh, project, and so we have $35,000 left in CPA money to finish that, but we are going to capital improvements for more money for that project. So you, some of you, if you go down there, you'll see a new fence along the trail. Mm -hmm. That's to protect us from falling rocks, but that's not a permanent solution. Um, Does the DPW have any responsibility? Yes. That? Yeah, I mean, in, in essence, the, pri the way we work is my office does a turnkey, so we turn these over to DPW. We agreed, because we had this contingency left, that my office would take the lead on doing this, the retaining wall. So you have been in communication with them? Okay. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they've come out a lot of times and give us advice. I, okay. I don't claim to be a structural person. Um, next slide, please. Um, the one thing we pro of all the 13 goals, the one we've made the least amount of progress is looking at the jargon is pavement to parks, but looking at are there a few places in the city that are paved that maybe shouldn't be paved? You know, we looked at the front of City Hall. Um, we've looked at uh, the on Hockman, uh, the corner of Hockman Road and Pleasant Street park there. And so we're still working that out. We've had some successes. Um, we got EPA to give us a free technical assistance. They flew up from D.C. To, to give us ideas about how you can do green streets to take advantage of these little parklets. If you Google parklets, you see it's a very in concept that's popping up all over the city, where in a downtown you, you have a very small park that can become incredibly exciting. Um, and so we hope to move forward in that in coming years. Uh, next slide. Uh, heritage landscapes, this, this was a new effort in our part. This isn't a big deal, but the idea was we've always been interested in historic buildings and we've always been interested in conservation areas, but we haven't had that much focus on where conservation meets the landscape. And so we're beginning to this. So these are small things. When we acquired a parcel of land, a Beaver Brook conservation area, there were two old buildings on it that were falling apart and we asked the seller to tear down the buildings before he took over the property. In years past, we've asked them to get rid of all the buildings. The Historical Commission asked us to leave the foundations as sort of a memory of what's there. So we're doing more of those things. You see in the upper left, um, the bike path East Hampton has been rebranded. So it's Manhattan Rail Trail, but it's New Haven and Northampton Canal, just to keep those, those memories alive. Uh, next slide. Um, and then the last thing is just, you know, we're, we're trying to make sure the public's aware of these amazing resources. So we've had a series of, of information programs that are out there we've done in the two, last two years. So obviously the mural on the Main Street Bridge is the most obvious to sort of get people on, King, on Main Street to look up and think about the bike path. We have a whole new signage program. We have Smith College interns, so we have these wonderful signs for free that they're building that are these really solid, well-made signs. We have the new kiosks along the bike path. Um, Friends of Northampton Trails and Greenways is doing a wonderful mapping program. So just different ways to get the word out of part of these efforts. Um, that's it. I was trying to run through everything very quickly, but I'm happy for any questions or comments. You know. Our uh, signage, our posts on the bike way, the metal, the rusty metal with the spikes that stick out the side, I get enormous calls and the, the hazard that they that they are for somebody on a bike to run into them. I mean, I'm just I'm throwing that out there. There, there are spikes, there's spears, um, and I'm just I just thought I'd throw that out there. And did not have a does it not? No, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I thought that that would end after the after the signs would be placed. Well, so far, they're they're still there. So they're all covered, yeah. but, but you know, there's certainly there's a, there's a, a two foot by three foot um, map on each one of them, and the map certainly has edges on it. You know, yeah. we looked at them and think they're far enough off the trail that they're okay, but 
you know, anytime you put anything up, obviously you create yeah. some hazard. But I think I got the, the calls were from the same people that about the post in the middle of the bike path that were right. holding. Yeah. Right. Right. So and those we've been slowly re replacing. You know, that we we're very aware of that balance. So the the bollards have been taken out in the places where the highest hazard, yeah. but left in where most worried about vehicles going in. Um, the the exposed metal that you're talking about that was a risk from the short time we built the sign to we put the the board on. Yep. Those are all covered. Yep. But there are signs that, that are there as well. Okay. Thank Council you, Mr. Freeman. Daniels. Thank you. Uh, I just have a couple questions about what is and is not included. When you're talking about recreation, you said one and a half percent of the city's of the city's land is in parks and, and yep. rec. Do, and then you mentioned Look Park. Does Look Park Look Park does not included in that Look park is included in that. Look park is included yeah. so this isn't just this isn't just publicly owned it's well Look, Look Park's park's technically public. part of the city right, okay um so yeah we included everything we included nonprofits as well so child's park which is not the city mass audubon is not the city as part of it so the, the total amount of open space in northampton right now not including the land underwater so not including land on the connecticut river is uh, six thousand thirty nine acres which is 27 percent of the city of that, a lot of it is state land and federal land and, and nonprofit land. Right, and then what about um, <laughs> for-profit land, like uh, the um, recreation fields off Island Road? That, you did not include that? We do not include that. So um, that we, um, we are including land which is privately owned, which has permanent restrictions on it, like our culture preservation restrictions, conservation restrictions, but not land that happens to be recreation that someone could change their mind tomorrow and take it out. Okay, can I ask one more question? Yeah. Uh, back on slide two, um, talking about 18.1% is uh, pristine in conservation, um, but then there's additional private land with the conservation restriction on it. How much do, do you have, do you know the acreage on that? Um, I don't know offhand. It is included in that 27% I gave you of the entire city. It's included, but I don't know. I don't have it but, specifically by itself. But that twenty-seven percent also includes the recreation and the and the farmland. That's correct. Right. Right. Okay. I, could, I could give it to you. I just don't have that. So so let's let's work it from the twenty-seven percent then. The twenty-seven percent is recreation, agriculture, and the con and the conserve space. And is that is that is there any more than that? Uh, no. So we 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 do. Working landscapes, which is our generic agriculture and conservation restrictions, right. private land that we don't own. Together, that's 3.2 percent. I started the breakdown of what CRs versus what's APRs. Uh, as far as the agricultural side. Correct. Okay. Um, then the park and recreation we lump together. Again, if you wanted, we, we could break it down. I just don't have that here. So, I mean, sorry, revisit the agricultural part. So the well, working landscapes is 3.21, 718 acres of the city. They don't have the breakdown between. Recreation between that's right, right. And APR, yeah. That's fine, but the working landscapes part. This is again. These are things that have APR on them. APR and privately owned land. So, one of the challenges in these categories is there's some overlaps. So, for example, Northampton State Hospital is owned by the state. 300 acres of land. The city also holds an APR on it. I'm not including that because that shows up as open space. That'd be double. That'd be double. Right? We, we're very careful not to double count. But what about land that's farmed that isn't that isn't uh, doesn't have an APR on it. That's not included in this not process. Included. So mo you know, the meadows are about 3,000 acres. Right. So of the meadows, some is Mass Audubon, some is APR, and most is private unprotected. So that doesn't show up. So this is, a, this is about <coughs> but, we're defining open space as in guaranteed open space. There's a lot of other open space that could change, and we're not including that. But it, the meadows for, is a great example because the meadows use plan makes it very difficult right. to do anything other than recreation or farm there. Absolutely. Or I guess open. I guess you could just let it go fallow, right? And that's that's really the biggest risk of the meadows to us is not that someone's going to build homes on it, but that we lose it from active production. Um, so, so we have the numbers in my computer. I just didn't write. Yeah, right, and I realize I realize that the, I have the whole plan on my computer too, but I didn't review it before today. I, these are just some of the questions I had. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Biden? Council Lamar. I want to thank you for coming in and doing the presentation, Wayne. Do you recall how many acres Sawmill Hills from the LaPom family was donated to the city and the state? Um, it's either 80 or 88. I forget exactly where in that range it was. Okay, I think so it was 80. But. Once we took over the quarry, 
what is the whole total that we have under conservation between Sylvester Road, um, the Seraphim family's property, and the quarry? How much would you say if that's um, about? About 600 acres, but that's a plus or minus. Now, what you should know is that includes the Clapp family. Yes. Is a conservation restriction only. Yes. So of that 600 acres, roughly, and again, these are rough, 150 is not owned by the city. It's privately owned. We get taxes, but we know it would never be developed. And if you want, I can look get back to you with more detailed numbers. But Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Biden? Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, now we're on second readings for um, the uh, <sighs> On the recommendation of the Conservation Commission, Council Marion Labarge, speaking of the, uh, this is the, the purchase of a conservation restriction on West Hampton Road near Parsons Road. This is the second reading. Accept a motion. So Move to approve. Okay. Second. Um, there's a second in there somewhere. Okay. Discussion? Council Labarge? Yes, I'd like to recognize Wayne Biden, please. Wayne still. Second. Recognized. I recognize him. Yep. <laughs> Um, there were some questions at our last city council meeting in regards to the property that we are apparently buying from the Burke family. And I think um, Councilor Owen Freeman Daniels did have some concerns about it. And I mentioned to the best I could about Park Hill Road and how we can connect, like we're trying to connect further up the road and so forth and being on the property. So, Councilor Owen Freeman Daniels, if you have any questions, I mean, he is there to answer. Thank you. Um, Director Fiden, I, I voted for this at the last reading, but uh, I did wonder out loud what the, why, we were, why the city was paying for the conservation restriction rather than just accepting it if the landowners wish to put a conservation restriction on it. So, you know, it, it has a significant effect on the value of their property. So they're selling it to us, I think, below market, so they're giving up value. But like anybody else, their investment is in the land, and, and it's reasonable for us to pay for that permanently protected. The open space, just quickly, the open space plan does, as Council Barge was saying, has a vision of connecting a, a band of open space from Park Hill Road to Parsons Brook, and this is part of the overall piece. So we have a cons two conservation restrictions just east of this property, one to the south, and then two agricultural preservation restrictions a little further to the south and southwest, and they actually continue into East, Ham east Hampton. So a lot of where Park Hill Road turns into East Hampton, a lot of that is APR. So it's a big continuous strip of land. There's no public access, but it's really important for wildlife corridor and connecting that whole area. So, so the public good is the wildlife corridor? That's correct. And, and I think a visual piece too, but primarily the wildlife corridor. It's also, um, this is part of East Hampton's water supply. Um, and so the land is zone water supply protection. So it's also, I think, about being good neighbors and protecting water supplies generally. Just as we hope that towns north of us protect our water supply. Well, but just if, North, if East Hampton wanted to protect their water supply, they could take the land. Yeah. Is that right? They, ha they, they haven't opted to that so far. Right. They've been protecting a lot of land within East Hampton. But. Are there any other questions? Any other discussion? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, all those in favor? On Aye. Second. Aye. 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 Roll Opposed? Uh, abstentions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Uh, okay. Um, this is uh, also a financial order, uh, second reading purchase of 21.4 acres in Broadbrook Greenway, Fitzgerald Lake Conservation Area. This is the second reading, as I said. I'll accept the motion. Move to approve. Second it. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Do you need should we be taking a roll call? On on the the oh, so we did. That's why I mentioned it with ours. Stop. Sorry. In my, in my, in my rush to judgment, we do have to do it for the work. On second reading, I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. It's past eight now, anyway. <laughs> you were close. So, actually, this is a roll call. The first roll call would be on uh, the first order which was the purchase of conservation restriction on West Hampton Road near Parsons Brook. Yep. 
Yes. Yes. Aye. Yes. 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 It's passed, oddly enough. Okay. Uh, this now, this roll call is for the purchase of 21.4 acres of Broadbrook Greenway Fitzgerald Lake Conservation Area. Yes. Councilor Aye. Yes. 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 Now we're up to uh, the City Council grants a tax increment financing or TIF plan to the Grantham Group Assisted Living Project within uh, Village at Hospital Hill uh, Economic Opportunity Area. Move to approve. Okay. There's a motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Roll call. Aye. Actually, I'm sorry. Are roll call. I'm not sure. We need well, one. Let's request. have one. Request. It was requested. Request. 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 So, yep. so. Aye. Yes. 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 <clears throat> okay, and this is for second reading of an appropriation of $120,000 from community from uh, Community Preservation Act funding uh, to the City of Northampton for Christopher Heights Assisted Living Affordable Housing Project is bundled with the previous order. Second it. Any discussion on this? You want to? You got to do the first one. You got to do the second one. Yeah, that's right. Oh, on the roll. Mm -hmm. No, I mean on the on the right. order. Oh, I, that's your discussion. I yes. see. <laughs> Can uh, just a quick uh, question that I don't remember. Did someone from the CPA were they here at the last meeting when we discussed this, or the one before? So just one request I would have is when some something comes from the CPA. Uh, I think it was our practice in the past to have somebody from the CPA here. I'm, I'm supporting this tonight. I'm just saying in the in the future if we could if we could do that. I think it, I think it was a good practice when we had questions. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilor Labarge and then Councilor Tacey. Could we um, recognize Wayne Fiden? He might be able to answer something. Well, about he's, still, he's still recognized, so. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, the only question, I don't have a specific oh. question on this, and I support it. My question was, I couldn't remember if someone had come, and in the past we'd always had somebody from the CPA, so. We, we had um, some of my office fell and broke two ribs. That was the reason you oh, didn't have that's something. a legitimate Usually that excuse. Thank you. I, I was wondering about that because you'd always provided somebody. Thank you. How is she? Just a little bit. Um, just to that point, I did um, ask the mayor to give us, um, well, kind of a recap of, of what he understood the CPA's vote on that because it yeah. wasn't unanimous. Apparently there was one vote in opposition, but he said that was really because that particular person couldn't make the connection between um, uh, what the CPA and the uh, and the other funding so um, if I'm, if I'm correct? that was David Rothstein yeah. uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels uh, yeah I think that was a, the mayor did recount that and um, you know if I had been on the CPA I would have voted the same way Councilor Spector did you have a question or a comment uh, Councilor Tacey. Yeah, you skipped right over me, but that's all right. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, well, this was kicked around at our uh, ward meeting um, last week, and um, we had a lot of people that were not comfortable with spending CPA money uh, on, a, on a tax break for a profit company from out of town that did not appear to be just for Northampton. Just throwing that out there, there was a lot of uh, opposition at the uh, <coughs> after meeting about the TIF. <coughs> so, it, it, just a point of clarification: the TIF would only go to a for-profit system. Right. Well, absolutely. I made that. Okay. I made that explanation. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Right. The issue is about the, using CPA funds. I that I understood. That was the issue. Yeah. That was the issue in the coaching point. Got yeah. it. Any other discussion? Is there a request for a roll call on this, or is everyone okay with yes. the Yes. 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 
Yes. Hi. Right. Okay. This is an authorization to grant and or accept the his, an historic preservation restriction of Florence Grammar School. This would be the first reading I will and I will do that. Uh, this is upon the recommendation of the Planning Board and the Historical Commission. Whereas the, Flor <coughs> the Florence Grammar School campus has a rich architectural and human history, and whereas the zoning that provides the greatest reuse potential <coughs> the school requires a <coughs> historic preservation restriction be placed on the building, and whereas the Planning Board has issued a site plan approval for the reuse of the school consistent with this zoning and its requirement for a preservation restriction, and whereas said reuse of the school consistent with the Sustainable Northampton Comprehensive Plan will preserve the historic building and will create more reuse potential within walking distance of neighborhoods in downtown Florence, and whereas in, in a public hearing and public meeting respectively, the Planning Board and the Historical Commission have approved the historic preservation restriction and now therefore be it resolved further that the City Council authorizes the City of Northampton acting through its Mayor and the Historical Commission to grant and or accept the preservation restriction as defined by Mass General Law Chapter 184, Section 31 on said land for historic preservation purposes. Is there a motion? Yeah. I move, I move referral to econo the Committee on Economic Development, Housing and Land Use. There's a there's a, a motion <coughs> to refer to Ed Lou. I will second that. And there's a second. Any you want to expand on that? Yeah, I um I it's not that I have a specific problem with this, but there are substantive claims being made about um, the uh, potential reuse of this building, mm -hmm. and given that the talk of surplus of selling and surplus is in the air, I really think that we should move this to committee to investigate these claims. Um, uh, and Wayne Fine is still recognized if anyone has any questions relative to the historical uh, preservation restriction. Um, and Councilor Tacey, do you want to add? Yeah. Um, make no mistake uh, where I stand on this. I want to see us get, or the city get, the biggest bang for the buck that we can out of this. And I am kind of wary about how restrictive we will be on this piece of property for redevelopment or whatever if it goes if it does get for sale so i i was going to make the motion that it that it yeah, you referred to i thought maybe that and um and finance uh councilor barge and then councilor adams yes i was really surprised to see this in our packet um to be honest i was going to ask to have this tabled because i find it very premature at, to me, we have apparently some interest outside of looking at that building and possibly maybe buying it. So to go ahead and vote on something right now, which is premature, I thought we could just table this until with our committee, which will be coming up at some point this month, of talking about which way we're gonna go on this. But I think to be fair, with the process of whoever will be interested in the building will have the opportunity to come forth to say, do they want the historical preservation placed on it or not? And I also feel that we've given away buildings at a dollar a building, that we need to look at a fair price here and we need to make some money and we need to move on because we just can't afford to keep this building any longer. So. That's my feelings toward this. I don't even know why this came to us. Uh, Councilor Adams is next and Councilor Murphy. And at some point, I think we should allow uh, Mr. Fyde to respond. But well, just to be clear, there's been some process. I mean, there's there's been, correct? I mean, it's not totally out of the blue. But but I agree, more process I think might be good in this situation. I, I would support the motion to have Ed Lou take a look at it. And if there were a motion to have it go to finance, I would, I would support that too. Uh, Councilor Murphy. Um, I did meet with Mr. Fiden about this. You know, we we met the reuse committee met last week, and Mr. Fiden was away. So I did meet with him Monday, and perhaps he can explain the timing of this. If if it makes you more comfortable, fine. If not, you want to refer it. That's okay. But could you explain the, what we discussed and the timing of it, and, and yeah. why it's here now? So I'm just give you a brief background, if I could. If you remember, you adopted some zoning about a year ago, roughly. Um, which create an incentive to preserve historical buildings. Mm -hmm. So in return for 
preserving historical buildings that are institutional at school, there's more allowed uses. So there's no question historical preservation restriction may have an have a effect on the value of the building. The flip side is historic preservation restriction allows more uses of the property, which adds value. So, so one reason for doing this is to actually add value to the property so that additional uses could be on there. The second thing is, frankly, as you probably know, we do enforcement against private parties for violating zoning. The city is in violation of our zoning right now. We have some uses in there that are not allowed. The city came um, for permit under the new zoning about a year ago, a little bit uh, less than a year ago, and that had a condition of putting a historic preservation restriction. So we're trying to address that. The, the, the main reason <coughs> for the time that Council Murphy is talking about is, it, remember the language here is to authorize historic preservation, <coughs> not to direct it. So the idea is to say historic preservation restrictions can be a slow process because the state has to review them and sign off. So what we want to do is get your approval, be able to, you know, working with Council Murphy and his committee, being able to craft a final restriction, go to the state so we have their approval in place, but not record it. And that would be part of working with a, with a buyer. And so if in the end the buyer says, I'm only planning to do an office use that doesn't require this, and I, the property is worth more to me without a restriction, then we might go ahead and sell it without a restriction. But if the buyer says, yeah, I really want these uses, we don't want to start a three or four month process at that point, mm -hmm. because then the buyer will get financing in place, and it's really hard to get the bank to subordinate. So this leaves the options open. But based on the follow-up to Councilor Murphy's committee, where they talked about, I mean, you, I don't want to put words in your mouth because I just saw the minutes, but the, the committee was concerned about the restrictions being too strict. And what we're focused on is two things. The planning board was only asking for restriction to cover things that are visible from a public way. So the rear of the building would not be covered. That's where someone would put an expansion of the building if they did it, an elevator shaft. And then I think Council Murphy's committee was very concerned about window replacement. And our focus is the window openings shouldn't change. That is, the brick shouldn't be knocked out. But the windows themselves are not the original windows. And so there's no magic in those windows. Mm -hmm. And so we don't intend to protect those. And as an example, we sold the fire station exactly the same way. When we sold the fire station, we have a restriction. It obviously didn't prevent the bays from being knocked down on the first floor. It didn't prevent window replacement. But it does protect the, the fire tower and the, the lines of the building. So the idea is to the same thing. But again, you wouldn't, you or in this case the mayor, wouldn't be obligated to restriction. He'd have the ability. So to synopsize, um, th this process is initiated to run in parallel with the, the discussion about surplusing the property and then ultimately developing an RFP and then ultimately um, selling the property. And time is a consideration here because um, the fact that if, if we start this process and say we were to surplus the building relatively soon, there's also pending tenancies that uh, with, with leases that cannot be renewed because we don't know the disposition of the property. This would this would facilitate this this is one of those rare occasions where we're actually trying to make something work a little more efficiently and point in fact as I understand it this is not setting the conditions and standards of the historical restriction it's just simply allowing it to be uh, available should the purchaser or the bidders want to consider this in order to retain the uses of <coughs> there, which are now in violation if they were to buy the property they would be they would actually have to apply for a special <coughs> permit in each instance for for the current tenants. Uh, Council mm -hmm. what what's kind of unique in this circumstance is that we we did two things. We created this zoning uh, accommodation for educational historic buildings uh, that applied to Clark School to the churches that have been surplused and so forth. Many of those structures are in residential zones. Mm -hmm. And religious uses, educational uses can be wherever they want under zoning. This building, which makes it different, is we change it to office industrial. So somebody could buy the building and use the underlying zoning and redo the building, and that might be enough for them. Now, with the special accommodation that includes the, the historic restriction, that could let them do a slightly different mix of things. And what our committee was worried about is we find a buyer that will be the mm -hmm. best satisfy the RFP and be the best future owner for the building and let them pick I want to just use the underlying zoning or I want the restriction 
before mm -hmm. we actually execute it. So we can shop the building either way. Right. And okay. then if the buyer that satisfies the RFP says, I want the historic restriction, it would be in place and the mayor could execute it. But if the buyer says, no, I just want to use the underlying office uh, industrial zoning and I don't want the restriction, then it would be a different story. But we not commit until we find a buyer. Um, now, the discussion is on the proposal for referral, so just so we're more on that point, uh, yeah. Councilor. So the, his, the, the restrictions haven't been crafted yet? We, we haven't. We did a draft restriction which we circulated. Yep. We got comment from Councilor Murphy's yep. committee. We're in the process of revising it, and the revisions will basically be saying the windows can be replaced, and that will recirculate. So this approves a restriction. The actual language will be going through for comments, again, back to Councilor Murphy's committee. Yep. So if they were to put an addition on the back of the building and they were to cover a big part of the rear of the right. building, and we went through this with the Lilly Library. That's a good question. Question. That would not be, so in the current draft, that would not be regulated. It would not be <laughs> The back of the building would not be regulated. Correct. And that big span of windows in the front of the, the uh, auditorium is, would they be allowed to, to break that up into two spaces? If they wanted to keep the window openings, in the current draft, again, we can change it, if they want to keep the window openings the way they are, but change the windows to more energy efficient windows, that would not be covered. If they suddenly wanted to brick it up, then that would be covered. Again, we're, we we're share that with them if they want more changes. That put a point of order. A brick column. Point of order, please. Yeah. The windows up. We're both leaving sides. this. Yeah, okay. right. We, we're right. discussing right. whether it should be referred. So if we could okay. stick so to that. Yeah, the so for I do room. have a question. So state, so uh, yeah. uh, Councilor Schwartz, you have not spoken yet. So would. Uh, I, I don't feel compelled to refer it. I just want to say I'm, I'm, I'm not. It's not a line in the sand opposition. I won't be, you know, devastated if <laughs> my no go vote gets defeated. But I just feel like it's. I feel like there has been some a sufficient process to me, and what we're what I've heard is sufficient for me to vote on it tonight. Councilor Carney, you want to speak? Uh, um, just that um, as I'm hearing now, this um, there is a timing issue on this, and. Uh, I guess my question is, um, will these committees, Ed Lou and Finance, have another shot at this? And it sounds like they will, not at the specific piece of the historic uh, restriction. But what's, uh, what's ironic about this is the, it sounds like the historic restriction piece, if you were to allow that, to actually give more, a broader um, scope of possibilities for, uh, for sellers, rather than a restricted um, amount that and, and I'll Murphy give that to Councilor Murphy. For one of, the, one of the committees, the reuse committee, the nucleus of that is finance. So the fi mm -hmm. because they're, they're all, we're also the property committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all the finance members are on the reuse committee, and then that reuse committee is augmented by other community members to represent the neighborhood where the building is. So it's already there, um, and, and that is part of the reuse committee. But um, it isn't, you know, I'm comfortable where it is, and we're doing it to make it timely, but I don't, I mean, to be perfectly honest, I don't, it, it doesn't hurt anything if it gets referred somewhere because we're not going to be, we're not going to be actually executing this for a while anyway. So um, we sh it's nice that it's in process, but if we vote on it a month from now, I think it still works. So okay. if, it, if people feel very strongly, I don't think it hurts anything. Uh, Council that was simply my question that if there was if the time issue was going to be um, somehow get in the way of, of something I would have said fine I wouldn't vote to refer but if we have the time to do it I don't see why not the problem we have is mass historical we're going through a couple of restrictions of them right now including one for historic Northampton and it has been a exceedingly slow process so the reason we began this is the mayor was concerned about a restriction potentially slowing down a sale so we wanted to start this process so that we could submit something to Mass Historic. And it, we just don't know how long it's going to take for them. So we wanted to go to them. So, so I guess the question would be, this would come back in a month, uh, two meetings from now. Ed Lou meets the first week in April. I guess it would be the second meeting in April. I mean, if there's some way that you say, look, it's, this has been going on for a while and it really will slow it down, uh, I wouldn't, I, I'm understanding this more now. And I would say, okay, I won't vote to refer. But if, if there's not that, you know, the time element is not a real pre real pressure. I, I would say I would vote to refer. So I'm kind of just getting a sense. I hear you want to speed this along, but it's been out there for quite a while, the discussions about this building, correct? 
Right. The time pressure isn't, I, mean, I don't really care, frankly, in terms of the permit issued a year ago. The pressure is, I don't know how long it will take to get Mass Historic to sign off. So if a city releases an RFP quickly and expect to close, and the idea, I think, my understanding is to close before heating season so we don't have to own the heating piece, I, I want to file with Mass Historic as soon as possible so that we don't, aren't stuck with that. Okay, well, uh, I think Council LaBarge had her hand up and then Council Freeman Daniels. Um, Wayne, I want to thank you very much for going over this because I went in and saw um, Joe Cook last Friday and spent a lengthy time with him going over this. And he told me again today that apparently Councillor Murphy um, was going to be meeting with him or talking with him because it got to the point where it was like, do we vote on this or not vote on this? Because we were told that no matter what, if we didn't put the historical preservation on it, we could still move on. Right. I just want to say I, I, I thank you as well. I, I pretty much what you said is, except for the the time element of uh, of the mass mm -hmm. of the state, confirm what I had in mind. I just I'd like without having the um, without having reports from the reuse committee and. Um, a real specific outline of the options for the historic preservation restriction. I'd like to maybe have it, discuss it in committee and then bring it back for the for the next meeting. And we might even be able to set a, a, a different Ed Lou date if we can get it for, for the early part of, of okay. next month or something. Like that. Can I say just one other option if you're willing to, just because I am worried about the timing for, for Mass Historic. One approach is for you all to vote it tonight so we can start the process, but still Edlu should meet, give feedback to, to the Finance Committee or the Reuse Committee, mm -hmm. and the final restriction is going to be, the final restriction has to be approved but, by the Reuse exactly. Committee. Exactly. So that way we can move forward without your giving up your seat at the table. Well, wait. <laughs> uh, uh, Council Freeman Daniels, you wanted to add? No, nope. uh, if uh, uh, Tom Murphy want to say something. Oh, I just wanted to let you know, um, Reuse slash Finance next meets on the 26th of this month. So, Joint committee. and it's our hope. It's our hope at that point to have a sample RFP to start working on at that point. So that's when we'd next meet. If you want feedback from that committee, um, yeah. Uh, Councilor Specter. Well, I'm going to withdraw my support to uh, refer it to our committee, the uh, Ed Lou committee, uh, because I think one we could show up at the finance committee meeting. I don't feel we have to have purview if we have questions on this and want to find out more. I also, because of that, I was trying to get to what is the pressure. When you first answer the question, I was left kind of, I don't know if there's time pressure or not. When you just then answered, I sensed there is more time pressure. And I do understand that if I, if, if I, if I do understand this correctly, all this is doing is giving us an option that we're going to be looking at this later. It's giving the buyer an option of whether or not to put this in place and therefore Exactly. We can certainly put this on Ed Lou's agenda, and I think we should, and we can start discussing this. Um, but I, I would vote for this tonight to move it along because of the time element. I, I, just for a point of clarification, I don't know if it was ever seconded the proposal. Uh, it was. The finance, is that, is that all? Oh, fi finance was, was it not. It was to Ed Lou. No, was, finance was so not. Just finance was just, just, just to refer to Ed Lou is still the point. Um, any other conversation on that? I call the question. I, I think. There, I need, it needs a second, I think, Councilor. Ed Louis. Ed Louis no, you, Somebody Ed second. Louis second. I think you, uh, uh, not Councilor Adams second. Oh. Yeah. Well, Councilor Tacey. Councilor yeah. Tacey yeah. second. I'm All sorry. right. So it's been, it's been, the motion's been made. It's been seconded. We have had our debate. All those in favor of referring this to Ed Lou? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 Nay. Any abstentions? Based on, uh, based on the voice vote, I'm determining that uh, the motion fails. Um, Move the question. The question's been called now. The question, well, actually, there is, uh, yeah. there is no question. Move there. approval of the yes. move. Thank you very much. Second. All right. And then so, so the question has been moved and seconded, and then you're calling the question? I just meant that I'm, I'm not just squashing well, I'll, discussion. I'll no. But All right. If you want to talk more Anyone about want to discuss the motion right yeah. now? Yes. I'm not voting for this for the reasons that I wanted to add additional process to it. Noted. I'm, I also 
I'm refraining from exercising my right as to object under the charter. You're, I'm sorry, will you say that last sentence again? Go ahead. <laughs> Spit it out. <laughs> the has the right to actually object as the, uh, as it's uh, minority as it's, it's, it's mentioned in the charter to oppose if he and he's mentioning that he's saying that he is reserving that he's not reserving that, he's not employing that right at this point but he, he is I think emphatically stating his disapproval mm -hmm. Councilor Mark. um you know one thing we can do if you want to hold second reading till after the reuse committee yeah. has another shot at it I mean we always have that option This is still on the motion. Any other discussion on the motion? Uh, is the the council's pleasure for a roll call vote? Council Labarge? Yes. What is the motion we're voting on? The motion is to, the, order to, the, the order to, to uh, approve allowing the first the reading, allowing a, an historical restriction to be placed on the <clears throat> the Florence Grammar School. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what's the council's pleasure here on the vote? Roll call. Roll, Roll call. Council Murphy? Yes. Council Spector? Yes. Council Schwartz? Yes. Council Casey? No. Council Adams? Yes. Council Carney? Yes. Council Dwight? Yes. Council Freeman Daniel? Nay. Council Labarge? Yes. Okay. It is passed. And it will be up for second reading. On the 21st, <coughs> as Council Murphy has pointed out, there will be an opportunity for people to hear the discussion of the Finance Committee and the Reuse Committee up in the interim. Well, it, uh, clarification, it, will it be in the interim or no? So if, if we. Have, sorry, it's on the 26th. We'd have to. Yeah. I'm really, I'm really so we can do that. We can day. actually. Um, postpone the second reading if we choose that at the next yes. meeting. Suggestion is okay. a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. Is that your pleasure now? No. No, it is not his pleasure. You can now. do it at the end. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Council Murphy, important to know. Um, okay, this is the establishment of the Stormwater Advisory Task Force uh, with a revision. Um, this is to establish a, a task force to recommend, to make recommendations to the Council. Move Second. Uh, discussion? Councilor Adams. Well, when we first started the discussions around um, the actual formation of, of the ad hoc committee itself, we thought that we were under a much greater time constraint than we were. So people might be wondering why, you know, the committee has been assembled, but here we are with the order at this late stage. Um, I thought and others thought that, that uh, it would be, now that we have more time than we thought to actually go ahead and formalize it through this order, and if it's a good process, which I expect it will be, perhaps future councils can form a task force and use this as a template if they chose. So I thought it would be valuable to actually have it as a public document, um, even though it's a little bit late in the campaign. Just my question about this. Um, for those of us who have uh, uh, done outreach in our respective wards and secured people to represent those wards, have, has there been communication in addition? They're uh, actually assembling. They're meeting, they're meeting right now. Oh, okay, so they are. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> I move to suspend rule 14 then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's right. Uh, uh, Councilor Adams. 1.2 is that initially we had the mayor have an appointee, and we also learned that the mayor, is n n because of the charter, is not supposed to be uh, making appointments to uh, council committees, council task force of this nature, uh, but the mayor's appointee is still on the committee. May I make a recommendation for uh, an amendment? Um, in that nowhere here does it actually say it's an ad hoc committee or describes when it, it would terminate its business. Um, we should have language suggesting that upon the completion of, of the recommendation that the, the uh, committee is dissolved. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. So, sir, so we can do that or just add ad hoc language in there, whatever your preference right. is. Right. Can I, can I comment on that? Yes. Um, my suggestion instead of, because I think we should get this passed, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 
very quickly is that <laughs> we'll get it done. Too. We can also we can amend it. We can amend it the order at a, at a later time, or we can just rescind it. The reason that I've mentioned this is there's been some concerns uh, from the city clerk's office is about as to the status is whether this is a standing committee or an ad hoc committee, and as such. It, it may put uh, it may trigger mass general law to require uh, ethics testing um, uh, taking the oath and so on and so forth and I think if we establish it as an ad hoc committee and amended language at this point that that's how answer part of that. I, mean, I, I, I move to put simply uh, after the now therefore be it ordered language um, the City Council hereby creates an ad hoc stormwater advisory task force I mean just by adding that language I yep. think that cures it um, is there a second on that? Uh, second. second. Yeah. And, and also, uh, it, not only does it, you know, save everybody taking, uh, having to take that test and do that work, in fact, it is an ad hoc committee. So we are actually identifying it. So just so everybody understands, we're not trying to, you know, slip around something here. This, this has always been called an ad hoc committee. It's always been our hope that it would only be meeting maybe two, three, four times. So it's a temporary committee. We're giving it a, a very specific charge. It is not a permanent committee. Councilman Freeman. I'd like to move the question on that amendment. Okay. So the question on the amendment, the amendment is to establish language that Councilor Adams has recommended that we determine that this is an ad hoc committee. Is a, I second that. And it's been seconded. It's okay. moved and seconded. Do you want to discuss it? Just on the amendment. It's a talk. Sure. It's, you, I'm, it's just on the amendment. We're talking on the, uh, this is on the amendment. Pardon? That's just on the amendment. We'll be discussing that. I know, but I have other issues that I'd like to talk about. I've had my hand up, Councilor well, we, Adams. But, but uh, Councilor Barge, we're now speaking on the amendment, and then we can speak to the larger order. It was on that. Okay. Well, you still then you have the floor if you want to ask questions about the amendment or or the discussion. About oh wait. About okay. Uh, Councilor Adams, do you have? No, no, I'm just waiting to vote. Okay. All those in favor of the amendment, amended language. Aye. 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 Opposed. Any abstentions? <clears throat> All right, now back to the meat of the thing. I would like the difference, Councillor Adams, between the Charter Committee and this. What is the difference here? Well, the, the Charter... Charter Committee, if I'm right or wrong, apparently were... Each one of us councillors were asked to find somebody on our ward, just like we are doing with this task force. Okay, every one of us were asked to go ahead and find a resident who would be on the charter committee. So we did do that. Then they were sworn in, and I remember that, and their names were also brought forth here on the council floor. So can you explain what is the difference here between this task force and the charter committee? I, I'm, I, I, I don't, just need verification. I, oh, I'm, I'm not sure what you're asking. I, I think I understand the question. Well, if, if, you, if you... And I, I think I do. Um, I think the difference is that the the charter committee was a council. This, As a council, we were developing that committee. Whereas this, we, this was coming out of a joint committee that three councilors are sitting on. In the old days, we would have just had an ad hoc committee. I think we would have develop that committee wrongly. I mean, I think under the old charter, we probably could have done that as kind of an advisory committee to a committee that's a joint committee with the, with the DPW. So I think the other is a committee that the whole, the charter committee was something the whole council was, invo was involved in. Well, also I think also it's a, sta I think, I, I never heard the language on that one being that it was just going to be an ad hoc committee. It might be, but I think our concern more was that it was going to be a standing committee for it, quite a while. The significant difference is that they were charged with drafting a charter and presenting a draft charter to the council. And this is actually to make recommendations. Um, you know, truth be known, we, we, we actually could probably just go ahead and make our own decision. But this was the interest was to create a public venue for public comment and input on how we are going to approach and develop the stormwater management costs that we're going to be bearing. The other one was asking to actually draft and design a document that would that would be presented to the council to vote on. So there may not be uh, now a legal difference. 
I'm not entirely sure. So that's we're waiting. The, the city clerk is actually currently has a request into the state ethics board to find out what's required. Uh, and it may be determined that we have to approve all the members on the floor. And then also they will have to um, um, take an oath. And in, in if that's the case, then that is the case. And okay, that, that's as it should be. So sorry, that's, but, uh, the that's where my concern was, right. the comparison between both of these committees, between the charter and then this task force, mm -hmm. of us being asked as counselors, to, and if I can recall, Counselor Specter, you had asked us to look for residents who would be yes. willing to be on the committee. So it was the same thing like we did with the charter. Well, I, I understand. And in fact, actually. Because I was going to give Wendy a call tomorrow because I found it confusing. Right. Well, well, it, confusing finds it. It's, uh, this is, once again, this is the things is we're still in the shakeout period of transition from charter to application. And, um, and you know, and I think this is on me in that respect. Um, we're gonna have to, I'm going to have to do some more due diligence to find out, so make sure everything, this is a functioning legal uh, committee established under Mass General Law and, the, and conforming to our charter. And uh, Council Freeman Daniels, you have a, you've had your hand up for a while. Yeah, I, um, the, uh, the, one of the major differences between this committee and that one was that this committee is under the new charter, and uh, that one was under the old charter. So it really, it's 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 difficult to compare because it's two systems of government. Um, I, I, I had the opportunity to uh, to sit with the solicitor with a few other counselors, and um, I, after that, I think the solicitor views this as a um, as permissible for the council to create under the new charter, uh, although it's. Um, there's, I think there might be some future understanding that, that, that might change that. Uh, but, uh, and the, I think this reflects what Councilor Dwight was saying, but we're still in the shakeout period. But um, given that this task force was happening already, um, I think this order is uh, barely timely. Uh, and if, it does find, if we do find out that, uh, that uh, they, have to, they have to go through additional um, an additional approval procedure, which I actually do not think they have to, but I, I think they may have to, um, they may have to take take an oath and and go through an, a, a um, an ethics requirement. But I do not believe they'll have to. Uh, um, they'll have to. There'll be an, any additional approval process that because the council, under my understanding of the new charter, the council can create its own committees. And, um, that's it, and that this is this is that that creation, so I think that's I think that there's a key difference there, and consultation. Yeah, and the, the let's not get too um, straight on here. The the charge of this committee is it isn't that high. It's going to be a, it's a short term. We're going to look at ways of funding. Period. This they're not doing any design work or anything like that. We're looking at a way to fund this stormwater. That, that is the main charge of this, uh, of this advisory uh, board. They're going to look into different ways of funding, and, uh, and they're going to make recommendations. They're not actually going to <laughs> dictate anything. Um, but anyway, uh, this is not going to be a long-standing committee. And we promised them that in our sales pitch to them, that we weren't going to overburden them week after week after week for years on end. Yeah. So thank you. Councilor Specter, you want to? So as the point person for the sale to get people on this and and i'm in this i think we're all kind of just trying to figure out this new way of working and thank you to um councillor adams and councillor daniels for kind of pursuing how we do this legally um because boy it, it was confusing to me how we were going to go about this but i, I this is just a, a plead from the person who begged some people to be on this to add more layers to this like having to go to the computer and take the ethics test. And I know it's not a big thing. It's a half hour of their time. But if they don't have to do that, if we don't, it's just, I really said to people, be, you know, we're very focused. This is a very specific thing. You've just come in for this. If, and I realize if we have to do these other things, we have to. Um, but if we don't for this particular group, and in the future, I think, you know, 
I, I was erring too. I, sh I didn't know how this would, would shake down in terms of forming an ad hoc committee. We've done this before on the DPW. But we probably we probably weren't following every rule at that point, even under the old charter, and, and we thought we were. But um, under the new charter, there are new things happening. This committee is meeting, or right did now. meet. Right I think they're meeting right now, so I hope we can pass this this evening. I hope they're out already. Uh, and, and let's remember the principal purpose of establishing this committee was to create more public access and input and expand the conversation. Uh, and once upon a time, there wouldn't have been an ad hoc committee. It would have been decided probably in the, by the BBW, and we'd get a memo to that effect of the yep. establishment of an enterprise fund. This is actually our, at our <laughs> insistence that we make these processes more open and more engaged and allow the public an opportunity to to continue their continued input and also expanding awareness and education about the issues that that are <coughs> discussion so that's the impetus for the establishment yeah. of this um, and we may not have manufactured it in the, in in dotting all the I's and crossing the T's I think we may have actually crossed some I's and dotted some T's by accident we'll find out We'll find out. Uh, and I'd just like to take th this opportunity to thank all the people that volunteered to yeah. serve on this board. I know I've got Emery Ford is my my brilliant guy from Ward Seven. He's on this and uh, he's volunteering his time. And uh, I really don't want to belabor these people. Well, they, they can't hear that now because they're convening. So um, uh, yeah, let's vote to authorize them before we congratulate them. I think I, <laughs> I think that's a good plan. So. The, uh, I'll take that as calling the question. All those in favor of this, the establishment of this stormwater management ad hoc, ad hoc committee. Aye. committee. Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Move second reading. Or suspend. Mo suspend. 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 Rule 14. Second. All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. 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 Okay. Accept a motion for the second reading. So, so moved. Second. 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 Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. And now we now we can congratulate them. Thank you. Well, or thank them. Let's thank them. <laughs> Send them a thank you note before they get really angry. Um, this is an order. This Mr. is President, second. I'd like to move orders three and four as a group. The motion is to move three and four as a group. Second. Second, second I the reading. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The reading is up deemed well. and waived. All right, so uh, just for the public, these are warrants of special state primary to be held on Tuesday, April 30th, 2013, and also a warrant of special state election to be held on Tuesday, June 25th, 2013. This is in second reading. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Now we're up to the council rules. This is second reading for the council rules for 2012 to 2013. Move second reading. Second. Any further discussion on these rules? All those in favor? Aye. Oh, Aye. Aye. We need a roll call. Roll call. Oh, I, geez, Mary, and you, I'm sorry, Mary had said that too. There's, uh, we, these uh, these have to be amended because of, Councilor Adams submitted uh, changes. Changes. Since the, la since the last reading. <coughs> so, as amended, the rule eight was removed. Uh, other minor changes you wanted? To uh, I don't think there are any minor, cha minor changes. <laughs> rule eight was removed because the solicitor um, has interpreted that the president cannot pass the gavel. That that the reading of the charter is that if the president is present, the president <coughs> must chair and cannot pass the gavel. So that's not an option. So I struck the rule entirely. Um, there is no compromise or any any other thing we could do. So I, so I struck the rule and, and renumbered them. And I, think, and I think that was it. I think I moved it as amended, didn't I? I don't know. If you did, we'll, we'll put it I'll oh, take that yeah, as a... Yeah. Take I intended. <laughs> <laughs> that was our intent. Murphy's oh. moved as amended. It was seconded. I seconded, so... I'll and Councilor Carney has seconded as amended. Uh, and uh, Just a question. Were there any other changes then? I think just that was it. Okay. The number order. Yes. The, the re renumbering? Eight went away. Okay. It. Eight's gone, so... Be numbered. There's one less rule. There's one less rule. All right. Is everyone up to speed on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Any abstentions? Okay. All right. 
We have a number of referrals coming up here. This is uh, to amend. Can we move these as a group? Can we do it as a group? Is there any, have any objections? Can we do them as a group? As a group? One to eight. We're all going to the same place. We're all going to the same place. Yeah. I'm sorry? Yes. Yeah. Do you want to do that now? Yeah. What's that? Boy, Mary. Mary, I should say that Mary is actually, she schooled me on all this stuff, and I've missed every single point she wanted me to hit tonight. <laughs> to know. I'm going to, if, okay, what I'm going to ask is an authorization for money to be allocated to Mary to get a cattle prod. <laughs> <laughs> Stimulate me to <laughs> make this easy. Just swap seats. Right. Yeah. Hey. Just smack me in the back. Where you want? Is the the council right. having the, the I think we should all have the bad secretary explain? <laughs> Please. Uh, yes. So, um, with your permission, uh, Mary is going to explain what this is for you. Uh, for over two years, I've been keeping uh, track every order or ordinance that gets referred more for me to know where they are but this is for each of you so you can see where they are or who they got referred to mm -hmm. it doesn't have what Councilor Freeman Daniels asked about um, answers and recommendations but at least you can see where they got referred or where they're going to get referred for instance all the ones you have tonight and then add in where they're going to. I've been keeping this for the ordinance committee and more for myself, but this is the kind of thing you were talking about at the last meeting of tracking all of these. So um, maybe in that same vein, um, Councilor Freeman Daniels was um, concerned about the public being able to track ordinances as well and how, you know, it says, can often seem like a circuitous route that these go by. And so is there a way that somehow this could be Put posted the to the website and mm -hmm. folks could see then mm -hmm. where, where things are? Mm -hmm. Good idea. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels and I have been talking about this from the time I got elected about tracking um, uh, possibly through a Google Doc or some other aspect, uh, tracking orders so that councilors can keep abreast. Uh, citizens can keep abreast to figure out which committee they have to show up for if they want to testify uh, on some issue. And Mary's been doing this all along. So, um, <laughs> um, so, uh, so that I think that informally that that if we, if we can incorporate this into the into the city website and then possibly a Google Doc at some point. Once we get all that to speed, that that be that would go a long way to addressing some of the questions that came up in the so-called Roth amendment as it was incorporated in the rules, or one aspect of it anyway. <coughs> uh, Councilor Freeman Dams. I think this is great. Thank you. Um, you know, it it, uh, it really helps to uh, to be able to track these. Um, I, I'm sure I knew that you would be doing it by some method. I didn't. I just didn't realize uh, how you would be doing it. And uh, I, I don't know uh, if there is a way for for it to eventually be be moved online or something like that. I, I think that's online. it's tremendous. I could also add a column so that you know, for instance, when it passed Ed Lou and what the recommendation was, mm -hmm. and so forth. Is this an Excel? Document? Uh, yes. Yeah. This is Excel. Yeah. If, if, if it doesn't, you know, as as long as it's valuable to you, I and mean, I think it'll be valuable to the public. It's pretty much how I keep track of everything. So it's an Excel document, can easily be transferred to uh, Google Docs, um, <coughs> and, and that, that problem is addressed, and that's great. Thank you. For those, for folks playing at home, you can play along. Uh, Council LaBarge. I want to thank Mary. Yes. Very much, Mary, for doing this. It's well appreciated. I'll, I'll ditto that. And, uh, or just if it were convenient enough, I know not to add more, but I mean, there are way even for each of these that they're just uh, acronyms here, but a hyperlink even that would just take if a person wanted to track where it was or how they could go to that committee, they could just click on then PB, uh, uh, PS, and that would bring them to when the yeah, public safety meeting, when it meets, et cetera. 
We can work on that. We can. I could help you actually, that. Somebody else could. That we can do build-in hyperlinks for the for those. We'll work on that. It'll be fine. Not for you to. I, do. I put this entirely in the council president and the <laughs> clerk's hands. The clerk's going to really want that cattle prod. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right, we're back to uh, the business, and the uh, motion still stands to move these as a group, and they're all being referred to uh, ordinance. Uh, that's that's one through eight, or does that not include the late filings? One through eight. One through eight. One, one through eight. eight. Uh, so the, the motion's made as a second. I second that. That's to move them as a group. All those in favor of moving them as a group? Aye. 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 Okay. And now I'll accept the motion to move them. So moved. Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 To refer them. To refer, to refer, to refer them. them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you. Good point. Wait a second. That was close. Uh, yes, it was close. Yeah. We just passed them? Now you have to do the late file. And, and now we're doing the late file. This is for our ordinance chapter 312 at article uh, 14 vendors, section 1, permitting of ice cream truck vendors. And this is to be referred to, uh, this is recommended by the Committee on Public Safety and referring to Committee on Ordinance. Suspend Rule 38 and move to report second. to ordinance. There's a, okay, there's a motion to suspend rules. All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, and I'll accept your motion to uh, refer. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor of referring? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Um, now we're up to the update part in the committee uh, from uh, committees. Is it chairs? The Parking Committee of the Transportation Parking Commission will have its first meeting on March 18th, 7 o'clock, in this room. Thank you for the, to the public for your application. It's applications. Councilor Murphy? Oh, do you know anything about the parade? Well, I was, I was just going to say, that was going to be my announcement. There will be a parade. It will actually be on St. Patrick's Day. It will be in Holyoke. And I understand that we're expected uh, the councilors are expected to march, and in fact, actually, somebody bragged that we were all going to be there. The fact is, I have not heard from the Holyoke Parade Committee or the Northampton Parade Committee as to if they want our names and stuff. But uh, and what is the day and it's time? March seventeenth. Seventeenth. Under the seventeenth of March, marching on the seventeenth of March in in Holyoke St. Patrick's Day Parade. I will be in attendance. Um, Actually, what I'm going to say is just informally, if you want to submit your names, just uh, send to me your interest in, in attending, and I will try and find someone in authority with a shillelagh to forward it to them so that they know that we're coming. <coughs> um, and that's the extent of my announcements. Uh, Councilor Adams, do you have anything? Uh, any new business? All right, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all very much. Hey, Mary.